Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 25th of April. India's poll panel seeks responses to complaints against PM Modi and Rahul Gandhi. World Sindhi Congress highlights unlawful land acquisition in Pakistan. And Iran ready to strengthen ties with Sri Lanka inaugurates Hydro Park project. And now for all the details. India's Election Commission on Thursday sought responses from the ruling BJP and the main opposition Congress party on alleged violations of poll rules by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi. The Congress, along with other two opposition parties, had lodged a complaint with the poll body against the Prime Minister over his remarks made at a rally in Rajasthan, in which he alleged if Congress is voted to power, it would distribute the nation's wealth among infiltrators and those who have more children, which the opposition said was aimed at Muslims of the country. On the other hand, the BJP in its complaint had accused Gandhi sought to create divisions based on linguistic and cultural issues. The Safran Party also accused Congress President Malikarjun Kharge of misleading the voters, seeking action from poll body, citing violation of moral code of conduct. The election panel has sought responses from BJP President J.P. Nadda and Congress President Malikarjun Kharge by April 29. In a bid to tackle economic crisis, Pakistan's business leaders on Wednesday suggested the country's Prime Minister, Shehbaz Sharif, to initiate trade ties with India to promote business and commerce, which would greatly benefit the economy of the cash-trapped country. India halted trade ties with Pakistan after the 2019 Pulwama attack. Businessmen also asked the Prime Minister to extend a gesture of reconciliation to his incarcerated political opponent and jailed former PM Imran Khan. Sharif sat down with the business community to find ways to uplift the economy through exports, but his resolve was met with the apprehensions from industry leaders who said it was almost impossible to do business under the current circumstances, particularly with high energy cost and inconsistent government policies. Pakistan has experienced an ongoing economic crisis as part of the 2022 political unrest. It has caused severe economic challenges for months due to which prices of food, gas and oil have increased. Pakistan's special representative to Afghanistan, Asif Durrani, said on Wednesday that the country has suffered more due to Afghanistan's internal conflict than the three wars with India. Speaking at a conference on Pakistan in the emerging geopolitical landscape held by a think tank in Islamabad, Durrani said Afghanistan has been a permanent fixture in Pakistan's regional strategy for the past few decades. He highlighted that the country has suffered geopolitically since the Soviet invasion of its neighbour, followed by the NATO operation in Afghanistan. Durrani emphasizing the impact of America's war on terror, the two-decade-long offensive operation in Afghanistan, said that more than 80,000 Pakistanis died during this operation. He added that the country is still counting its dead and injured. While it was hoped that peace would return to the region following the withdrawal of US and NATO forces from Afghanistan, he said that expectation was short-lived as militant groups have intensified attacks on Pakistan using Afghan soil since the Taliban's return to power. Moving on, the World Sindhi Congress this week highlighted at the UN the unlawful acquisition of lands of Sindhi people by the Pakistan army seeking intervention of the world body. A report. Farhan Sumro, an activist from the World Sindhi Congress on Tuesday, raised concern at the 23rd session of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues over the occupation of agricultural and residential lands belonging to the Sindhi people by the Pakistani military and its proxies. He highlighted the Pakistani military has announced plans to occupy 1.3 million acres of land in Sindh for corporate farming. This practice is causing grave harm to the rights of Sindhi people to life as well as destroying ecological habitats 
and historical sites. This issue traces back to displacement of Sindhi Hindus at Pakistan inception and further intensified following the completion of Ghulam Muhammad Baraj in 1955. This resulted in allocation of vast tracts of land to military affiliates through OPEC process managed by unelected interim government. These allocations, often void of transparency and legal rectitude, do not represent the interests of local communities. Sumro urged the UN to intervene and said, despite being the wealthiest in terms of resources, a huge population of Sindh lives under abject poverty and suffers from malnutrition. Moving on, during a short visit to Sri Lanka after visiting Pakistan, Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi on Wednesday said that Tehran is ready to strengthen ties with the island nation and other Asian countries. Iran and Sri Lanka signed five pacts or memorandums of understanding during the visit. Opening a 514 million US dollars hydropower project, Raisi pledged to support development projects in Sri Lanka by providing technical and engineering services. Iran agreed to build the project in 2010, but funds dried up after it released 50 million dollars as US sanctions imposed later that year on the Middle East nation made it hard to transfer money, forcing Sri Lanka to fund the rest. The visit to Sri Lanka is the first by an Iranian president since 2008. آسیایی کشور همسو و مستقلی است که می تواند آینده بسیار درخشانی را برای دو کشور و دو ملت رقم بزند. So what is common with us we should strengthen. ما امروز افتخار داریم که این پروژه تکمیل شده و جناب علی اینجا حضور داریم. We are all countries that belong to the south. ما همه کش... ما کشورهای ایران و سری لانکا جزو کشورهای جنوب هستیم. At a time when south uh, now wants to establish its own identity and its own independence. Due to the sweltering temperatures in Bangladesh, the UNICEF in its latest report has expressed concerns about the health and safety of children as they are at extremely high risk of the impact of the climate change. The report states that unusual rise in temperatures poses grave risks particularly to newborns, infants and young children who are considered to be an especially vulnerable population to heat-related illnesses such as heat stroke and diarrhea caused by dehydration. The UNICEF has urged parents to be extra vigilant. The Bangladesh Education Ministry has ordered the closure of all government primary schools in the country till 27th of April. The heat wave has also left some animals in the zoo suffering and panting from the punishing heat. Bangladesh is one of the countries which is the most vulnerable to the impacts of the climate crisis. Moving on, scores of devotees carried and moved around a chariot carrying idol of the local deity into a pond in Nepal's Kathmandu to symbolically search for missing jewellery of their local deity during an annual festival. Take a look. Hundreds of devotees gathered near a pond in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Wednesday to take part in Gahina Khojne Jatra or Jewelry Finding Festival. The devotees carried a decorated chariot of goddess Tundal Devi and moved it in the pond to symbolically search for the missing jewelry, which the legends say was lost by the goddess when she was swimming with her sisters in the sacred water body. The festival is celebrated for a week and on the main day the chariot is taken around from the Baluvatar temple to the temple in the Handi Gaon area of Kathmandu that houses many other ancient temples. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.